Hi, this is HughForGuitar.com and in this video we're going to be documenting the finishing stages of our 1965 non-reverse Gibson Firebird restoration. After respraying the guitar in Pelham Blue, I set the guitar aside for about six weeks to let the lacquer really harden off. After that, I just went through the usual finishing procedure, which is uh, various grades of wet and dry paper, going from 400 grit all the way up to 1500 grit. The paper's soaked in water with a little dash of uh, washing up liquid, which helps it slide on the surface, makes sanding easier. And you can actually see it foaming up as I'm doing the sanding. After the abrasive paper, I moved on to uh, micro mesh and I took it all the way up to 8000 grit and I followed up the micro mesh with polishing compound. The first compound I use is something called Ferrecla G3 and after that the finishing touch is something called Meguiar's Scratch X which just gets rid of the tiny little scratches that are left over. At the end of this process I'm kind of left with a guitar that's looking sort of brand new which is understandably not what the owner wants at all. So this video I'm going to be showing you the relicking process where we'll be uh, relicking the paintwork, I'm going to be relicking the metalwork, the plastics, uh, reassembling the guitar and at the end of it we're going to have a little sound clip. So we've reached that fateful juncture where all this enormous amount of work that's gone into making this finish look all smooth and pristine and shiny is about to be partially undone because the relicking process has got to take place next and the first thing I'm going to do is introduce a few kind of dents and dings into the finish but I want to do this in quite a considered way because I don't want uh, a damage to occur where it wouldn't in, in reality so I'm leaving the guitar strung up and I'm also putting the pit guard on, be it temporarily, so when I start to um, damage the finish, uh, this pit guard will protect it in areas where uh, it would always have been protected over the years. Some people use uh, bunches of keys for this, I, I've done that uh, and it ends up looking pretty good. Like I said, I want this to be quite a minimal relic really, uh, quite subtle, so I'm just going to use these kind of medium size bolts. Uh, I don't want to use screws or anything like that because I don't want any really sharp points. I'm just going to hold this a few centimeters above the finish and I'm just basically going to keep dropping these on. Sometimes you do get more significant chips and that's okay as long as you don't get too many of them. You can make checking lines using a razor blade or an inverted air duster but nothing beats a deep freeze if you have one that's big enough and you will need a big deep freeze for a Gibson Firebird. The dents and dings are done first because the hope is that the checking lines will form all around them. After its third two hour freeze and thaw cycle, checking lines have formed all over the neck and body. Over the next few months and years, these lines will open up and become even more apparent. So I've got plenty of checking lines on this and I'm happy the way it turned out. As with most vintage guitars, the lines are invisible from some angles and if you, the light catches it just right, they literally pop out. And over the next few months, I think this uh, lack of check-in will just become more and more visible, just as things just open up a little bit. So I'm not going to try and force it now, but what I do want to do is get in here with some stain and just uh, pick up these little dents that I've made. Uh, there's a kind of a whiteness about them from where the, the lacquer kind of crushes. And if I get in there with a little bit of this stuff here, which is old school, Coal run stain. Unfortunately, you can't buy this anymore, and this is the last one of these that I've got. I'm just kind of picking up little dents, just going to let the stain soak in a little bit, and it just kind of takes the newness off them. Adds a little bit of subtle patina. 
sometimes you can get in there with your hand like a French polisher and just buff it out with the palm of your hands and it just uh, brings it up in a, in a really nice kind of way. I've got a load of gold plated parts here that look way too new and shiny to go on the guitar. The bridge and the um, bridge bolts uh, arrive pre relict so I don't have to do anything with those but I've got this new set of Clusen tuners. They're very shiny. I've got a couple of brand new strap buttons. Monty's pickups very kindly supplied us with some gold plated uh, pole screws. I've uh, got the tuner bushings, a load of nuts and washers for the control parts. So uh, I'm going to try and age these up to make them look a bit more appropriate for a 1965 guitar. And the first thing I'm going to do is chuck them all in a plastic bag and give them a really good shake uh, with the intention of just scratching them up a little bit, uh, just breaking the, the shininess of the surface of the finish. And uh, then we can take things from there. Okay, it probably won't show up on camera, but there's lots of little kind of micro scratches and dents. Really, really subtle all over the hardware now. Uh, relicking can and often should be quite subtle. Um, it doesn't have to be too overt. We're not trying to create a like, cartoon vintage guitar here. The idea is to make something that looks more kind of convincing, really, um, and not go too over the top. So. I'm going to leave it at that and move on to the next stage with this uh, gold plated hardware. As you can probably see with this already relict um, stud here for the wrap tail, uh, the gold plating has been worn off and that looks really nice, just kind of dulls the gold effect a little bit. Uh, makes it look a little less 1970s bathroom. So uh, the best way I found to do this, and I think most people uh, use this technique, is just to use brass, oh, brass cleaner. Let's see if we can just show you a little bit now. It, it works really quickly. Hopefully this will focus. So I've just this, done this one on the end here and already that gold is looking really dulled. So I'm just going to carry on with this, try and be careful. So I've finished this set of tuners and if I show you this bushing right next to them, this I haven't rubbed with the Brasso, the tuners I have and you can see the difference in colour. Brasso works quickly, it works well, it's quite controllable and it's good fun to do. So uh, I'm just going to crack on now and finish all the hardware. With some of these parts I want them to actually look um, quite worn and rusty. So what I'm doing with the pickguard screws and probably also the, uh, the pickup uh, pole screws is I'm going to treat them with this electronic method. So I've got a fairly small uh, transformer, uh, 9 volt transformer. Um, the negative is connected to this screw here which is suspended in some salt water and I'm just gonna basically connect a screw like that, just loop of wire there. I'm not going to dip it under the water, just the very end of it. I don't want to make the threads rusty and I'm just going to dip it in, watch it foam up now. It'll bubble quite violently. There you go, a split second. Clearly I'm not going to treat the tuners this way because I don't really want to put a set of expensive tuners under water. These gold parts are all relic now with the salt water treatment and the Brasso. Okay, what I have in this tub are some metal spacers and some hydrochloric acid. What I'm going to do with these tuners is just let them sit in the fumes. I'm just using a spacer there. I don't want the metal to actually 
touch the acid at all. Like I said, just sit in the fumes. If you're doing this, wear goggles, work outside, but well ventilated area, wear gloves. What I'm looking to do is just kind of dull the finish now and I'm going to keep a very close eye on this and make sure it doesn't all happen too quickly. I just want to get a little bit more patina on the metal. Okay, the tune has been in for about three or four minutes. And I'm really pleased with the way those are looking. So we've got these two uh, brand new pickup covers. They're really shiny, not really going to suit the guitar very well. So I'm going to relic these up and it's really the last bit of relicing I need to do before I can put the guitar back together and set it up. Um, one thing I need to address here is that the uh, securing screws that go through and, and fix these pickups to the body, um, they don't have that countersink. So I'm just going to see if I can sort that out before I start relicking and just take the kind of shine and newness off these, scratch them up a little bit and dull them down and fingers crossed they'll look a little bit more kind of of a piece with the age of the guitar. Okay, I just want to get some random scratches on here, so I'm just going to use exactly the same technique as I did when I scratched up the hardware. I'm just going to chuck some of my nicely relic screws and bushings and what have you into this bag with the pickups covers and uh, give this a shake. Okay, I'm going to start with this 3200 grit stuff that uh, I get from a car accessories place. And I'm just going to start trying to knock back the gloss. Actually, this is working really well. Going to make sure to do all the sides and the corners. Try and keep the direction of movement, you you know, irregular because if it, you just kind of always go in one direction, then they just look like they've been sanded, and it's not really the effect that I want. Uh, figure of eight pattern is kind of useful. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. Uh, don't know if how well the camera will pick it up, but you can see this one I haven't treated and this one I have. Okay, I'll just do the other one and uh, I think uh, these will be ready to go on the guitar. So these are the Monty's pickups that um, came with the guitar and they've got these quite shiny pole screws. So as I showed you, I've relic these up. So. It's time to get these out. Uh, this is a very long procedure unless you have an electric drill, so... Okay, that's the last one of those screws going in. And uh, if I pop that through there like that... There you go. These guitars were supplied with this lining um, much like Fender was using with the Jazzmaster and presumably it's for uh, it's to help reduce noise pickup with the single coil guitars this slots right in this must have been used in several different models because it's uh, pre-punched with a load of different holes there's one in the side here um, for wires coming downwards uh, one here for the electronics that will work with this guitar and loads of different um,
pot and jack whole configuration. So uh, I guess it was like a one size fits all. Anyway, you might notice that this uh, masking tape has been wrapped around the, the ground wire. I, I did this prior to spraying it just so I could keep the ground wire nice and free from lacquer and it seems to have worked quite well. So looking at carefully at these parts I can see that uh, this one would be a volume control because this end lug here is, is grounded to the casing of the part and this wire here is is a link wire for the uh, for the ground wire and this one is wound to be a tone control so that one will go in there similarly this one has the uh, ground connection from the the lug against the casing of the part so this is the volume control and this is the tone control so these will go together kind of like that um, this link wire will come across uh, and I'm going to take out these modern capacitors I'm going to put in some um, ceramic disc capacitors just to give it a slightly more authentic look and just check to see how they would have been wired originally and as far as possible I'm just going to replicate the original wiring. <laughs> So the pots are all cleaned up. As you can see, I've cleaned up the casing with a cotton bud and some uh, some acetone, which is really good for getting the old flux off. Uh, incidentally, all these pots uh, read 1965 uh, on the date codes, which is absolutely brilliant. I've put the shielding plate back in the guitar, and although it's a fairly tight fit, I've just put some low tack masking tape there just to hold it completely in position while I uh, reinstall these pots. So let's get these in there now, tighten them up, and then I gotta connect everything together. So I've got these pots in now, and just gonna make this one ground connection from this pot to this pot. Uh, things are looking a little bit uh, neater. I'm going to connect up this uh, ground wire. I think I'll link it between these two parts. And there's a blob of solder on the actual shield plate itself, which I presume is just uh, to make a ground connection as well. So I'll, uh, I'll uh, solder onto that too. The screws that came with these pickups uh, are clearly very, very old and were perhaps the original screws that fixed the original P90s in this guitar um, because you can't tell whether they were originally gold or nickel or chrome or whatever. Uh, I'm going to reuse them because I think they look absolutely great and it's part of the guitar's history. Okay, these notches were thoughtfully provided by Gibson back in the day to loop the wires through. Neck one in. Okay, that's both pickups installed and it's time to get the switch in. Okay, so there's this weird plate here, which is uh, another one of these kind of shielding devices. Um, it goes in there like that. The body was obviously cut at some point to install a, a, a different toggle switch or relocate the toggle switch up to the kind of les, standard Les Paul position. Uh, but the routing here looks kind of rough in comparison to this. And I think that's original and that was added at some point afterwards. Make sure to put the wires through there first. And I think I need a little bit more masking tape just to hold this down. 
And the question is whether I can get these wires through this rather narrow hole. Okay, looks quite promising. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is mount this switch onto the pit guard now to hold it in position before I wire everything up. Wow, it certainly looks like a guitar. So that's all the connections made. It's probably the, not the neatest wiring job I'm ever gonna do in my life, but uh, it's not too bad. So uh, yeah, the wires were left a little bit short, just about enough wire to do the job. So I think that probably looks a little bit neater and a little bit more original than it did before. I didn't do that burn mark there, by the way. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna test whether this circuit is actually working or not. I'm just gonna pop this uh, plate back on. There's some kind of coating or paint on the back that looks like it's conductive. So that might have been uh, part of the original attempt to get everything screened off and running quieter. I really have no idea if this is the original pit guard or not. Um, was it, if it was a later one, it might have holes either side of the P90 for height adjustment. The other thing is it's got the toggle switch rather than the slider switch, but looking at non-reverse Firebirds online, some have this arrangement and some have this the little slider switch. If any of you have got any idea whether this is an original pit guard or not, uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, I'd be really interested. I'm sure the owner would be as well. Right, these tuna bushings are going in quite easily actually. I'm just going to press fit these in by hand. Uh, there's a bit of polishing compound still in the holes but I don't really force anything but at the same time I still want these to be a nice tight fit. I'm probably going to make a new nut for this, but I want to get the guitar set up with this nut first and uh, make sure everything's working beforehand. So then I've got a much better, it's a much easier job then of, of replacing the nut if the action and truss rod and everything else is, is uh, already verified and working. So I'm just going to dab some super glue under here and glue it on temporarily and uh, get this guitar strung up. Well the restoration is finally complete and don't forget you can read all three articles that document the whole process on guitar.com. You'll find loads more photographs, uh, tons more detail and you might be surprised if you haven't read them already just what a state this guitar was in. Anyway thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed watching this whole restoration process and uh, don't forget to subscribe and it's finally time to check out what this guitar sounds like.